Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. In this example, we're going to be talking about engineering economics and going over a sample problem for single payment compound interest and present worth. So the two formulas that we've got, the first is we want to find a future amount given a present amount multiplied by 1 plus the interest amount as a decimal times the exponential number of compounding pay periods. The opposite is we have a future amount. We want to find the present worth amount after a total compounding number of pay periods. This time we're multiplying by the negative exponent n. And the same 1 plus i, the interest expressed as a decimal. So let's jump into it. Uh, we're going to say we've got an investor that's lucky enough to have $15,000 in his pocket. He found a bank account he wants to safely put his money in that's going to offer him an interest rate of 8%. After a total of five years, if it's compounded annually, so that's once a year for five years, what is his future amount? What does he withdraw? So we're going to set up the problem using the equation at the top. F is going to equal our present worth, which is the $15,000 cash that he's investing, times 1 plus i, which is 0 0.08. That's our interest as a decimal value. And n is going to equal 5 since it's compounded annually and it's, he's withdrawing it after a total of 5 years. So we punch that into our calculator and we come up with our investor is going to withdraw $22,034 after 5 years. Now what happens if after 5 years he decides not to withdraw it and he waits until 10 years? So now we have n equals 10. Assuming the bank is going to honor the same interest amount of 8%, what is his new future amount? So just like before, we've got a present worth value of the same $15,000 that he invested times 1 plus our interest amount. This time, n equals 10. We punch that in the calculator and we come up with, after 10 years, our investor is going to withdraw a total of... $32,384. Okay, one last example. Instead of at 10 years, he decides to stick with it for the long haul, and he doesn't touch his money until 15 years. So he makes that withdrawal at 15 years. It's compounded annually, so our N equals 15. The bank is still going to honor that same 8% interest. What is the new future amount at 15 years? So pretty straightforward. We've got, again, 15000 for our present worth amount which is the same amount he's been investing, times 1 plus our interest amount as a decimal. This time our new N is 15. So we do the math and we come up with, after 15 years, our investor withdraws a total of $47,583. So these were all examples of finding F, our future amount, if we know our P, our present worth, is a given. Now, how about, how do we find a present worth if we know a future amount? We're going to use this new formula up here for present equals our future amount times our interest and our negative exponential pay period. We're going to use the same numbers from this problem right here. That way we can check our worth. Um, if we find the present worth of each of these futures at their respective interest amounts, and at the same uh, pay periods, each one should be equal to the $15,000 that he initially invested. So let's see if that's what we come up with. So this time we're going to say P is going to equal, we're going to start with the 15 year period one, P is going to equal a future amount of 47,583 times the same 1 plus 0 0.08 at a pay period of negative 15 degrees. Sorry, negative 15 years. Now when we do the math, this one actually comes out to slightly less than 15,000. It comes out to 14,995.97, but that's just because we rounded here on this last dollar amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that's an even $15,000, okay? Uh, next one, we're just gonna keep working our way down at the 10 year mark, if our Future amount is now 
384 at our same interest amount, 1 plus 0 0.08, at a pay period of 10 years. And again, it's a negative N because we're going from future to present. We're working backwards. Punch this in, and we should come up with 15,000. And yep, that's going to equal a present amount of 15,000. And our last example, what is the present worth equivalent of, say, 22,000, 34 dollars? at our same interest amount from a pay period of five. Five years compounding annually. Punch that in and we come up with the same $15,000. Sometimes you might see these types of problems worded as um, our investor wants uh, $47,500 after the course of 15 years. If the bank offers him an 8% interest rate, how much would he have to invest in today's dollars? And that would be, of course, uh, 15,000. Just like these problems, um, they're kind of opposite. We would say our investor has 15,000 to uh, put into a bank account at 8%. After 15 compounding periods, how much would our investor have? He would choose money, and it would be that same $47,500. Okay, now let's draw our cash flow diagrams. So most of the engineering economic problems, they're almost always going to be represented by cash flow diagrams. Sometimes the uh, answers on the exam, they're going to ask you to pick the answer based on the cash flow diagram instead of based off the number. Or they're going to give you a cash flow diagram and they're going to ask you a quantitative and quantitative answer based off of the diagram. So it's important to know how to draw them and how to get the information from them. So let's draw all three based off the three uh, future from present worth problems that we did in the first step of this video. So the first one is after a pay period of five years compounded annually. So at the very beginning at pay period zero and equals zero, our investor deposited $15,000 in that bank account. And at the end, at n equals 5, he withdrew a sum of $22,034. And nothing on this cash flow line is going to happen from periods 0 up until right here 5. So for period 1, 2, 3, and 4, Nothing's happening here because he's got his initial investment of 15000 that he sunk in that account. He leaves his money untouched, and at the end of the fifth year, he has a total of $22,034. So let's move on to the next one. Second example we did was a pay period of 10 years. So at period zero, our investor invested that same 15000 This time... At our five-year mark, which is where we withdrew here, this time nothing happens because he leaves that money in until our pay period of n equals 10, our compounding period. And at that time, he withdrew 32384 Okay. And then our last example, n equals 15, At pay period equals zero, he invested that same $15,000 of cash. This time, nothing happens at n equals five. Nothing happens at n equals 10. But then at n equals 15, he makes a withdrawal for a total of $47,034. What if I say, I'm going to pick on n equals 10 for this example. What if I say, how much did he earn after this 10-year period? How would we find out? Well, that's pretty easy. We would just take our future amount, F, minus our present. So we would have that 32384 that he withdrew. And we would subtract it from his initial deposit of 15000 We run the numbers in our calculator and we come up with a total of 
$17,384. And again, we got that by taking our future amount, F, and subtracting it from our present worth. And we could even draw that out somewhere on the line right about here. We'll say that would be about the $15,000 initial investment amount. And then right here, that difference would be 17,000. That's it for this example. Hope you enjoyed learning about single payment, compounding interest, and present worth amounts. For more, come see us at www.electricalpereview.com. See you soon.